Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Steam Deck and how to get some awesome retro games playing. Part 1 of this video was how to get MU Deck on the system. If you haven't watched that yet and you need to know how, I'll leave a link in the description below. But in all the comments I got, the number one request for the next Steam video was how to get MAME running because MAME can be slightly confusing and there are some caveats and things you need to do on the Steam Deck to get it running well. And that's what we're here to show you today. It's a step-by-step -step process to get your Steam Deck playing something like OutRun or any other MAME game. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined to like what we do here, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But just like in the MU Deck setup, we're going to need a couple things. We're going to need a dock for your Steam Deck. I can't recommend them enough. I'll leave a link to what I have below. I don't make any money off those links. And you're going to need a USB drive formatted to XFAT so it can read on your Steam Deck system as well as Windows. But again, without a dock, it's almost impossible to get any of this working. So I can't recommend you pick one up enough. Once you get everything set up, it's going to be a much smoother process. So definitely pick that dock up. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Now, before we actually put any ROMs onto the Steam Deck, my recommendation is use RetroArch or MAME on your PC and test to make sure the ROMs that you have are functioning because we don't want to spend all the time and energy putting all of this together just to find out that you have a bad dump of a ROM. I test with MAME current, that seems to be the most effective for this sort of test, and all I do is make sure each ROM is working before I go over and put it on the Steam Deck because there's a lot of bad ROM dumps out there, so definitely test it before you get too far, and once you find that it's working on RetroRudge on your PC, you can feel confident that when you put it on your Steam Deck, it will work. Now one note, and this always trips people up, some games require both a zipped ROM as well as a CHD or compressed hunks of data image. People forget them and people don't do the titles correctly. For a game like Zoo from Taito, you're going to see there's a zoo.zip and I have a CHD zip file. The folder has to be identical to the zip, so it's Z-O-O-O, and inside of that folder you're going to go ahead and put the CHD file. If the folder isn't exactly the same name as the ROM, MAME is not going to find it and it's not going to boot it. So you'll see here the folder is lowercase z o o o. If we look at the zip, it's lowercase z o o o. If you do not do this correctly, you're not going to get CHD drivers and ROMs to work on your system. So remember, we have to make sure that whatever USB drive we use is formatted to XFAT. So go ahead and make sure before you start this process, if you haven't used that USB drive, on your Steam Deck yet that you go ahead and reformat it. Now just like in the last video, a word of warning, you are formatting a drive. Make sure whatever's on there you don't need and if you do need it, you've preserved it. Do not leave me a comment down below saying that you erased valuable data. I get one comment like that every single video. You guys have been warned, just do your due diligence. Once that is done, go ahead and hook it up to any of those USB 3 ports in the back of your dock or however you're getting USB into your Steam Deck and you will see on the front menu here, we have to go to desktop mode first. So go ahead and hit the power button or the steam menu button. Go ahead and go to power and switch to desktop mode. That's where we're going to be doing all of this navigation. And when you plug that USB drive into the dock, you're going to see a pop-up window that's going to say mount and open. A little bit of a funny phrasing, but you need to click mount and open so that USB drive is going to show up as a navigatable device on your Steam Deck in desktop mode. And you will see all the ROMs that we're going to be dealing with here. Bubble Symphony, Outrun, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and we have Zoo as well as the folder for Zoo and Violent Storm, an amazing game that I will show you. So over on your emulation folder, whether it's installed on a micro SD card or on your main Steam Deck storage, like I said, link below if you need to set up Emu Deck first, you're going to see a bunch of different folders and we're going to go ahead and put the ROM files into where I think they are correct. Now you can navigate around with this, you're going to have a MAME folder, you're going to have a MAME for all folder, but I put them in MAME current. That's just me. Follow along with this and it's going to work for you as well. But you'll see all these different folders we have right here. And we're going to have to put the ROMs in the correct one so the Steam Deck will look for them. Now you are using RetroArch with MAME for the most part on the Steam Deck. So if you make a mistake at this step, you can still find your files. But however you want to copy them over, whether you drag and drop or copy, that's up to you. Just make sure they're in the correct folder. I am using the little thumb pads on the Steam Deck to navigate around with mouse. 
it is the biggest pain in the butt. I'm going to get a mouse and keyboard hooked up to this shortly. But like I said, for that CHD file as well, Zoo, we need to make sure both the folder for the CHD file is in there as well as the ROM file. And again, check again to make sure that both of your files are correct. I can't stress this enough. If they are not named correctly for CHD files, MAME is just going to absolutely refuse to load those games. So you'll see we have the zoo folder. We're going to go ahead and copy in the zoo zipped ROM file, and that is going to work for us. I will show you in just a little bit. But now we have all our ROM set up, all we have to do is tell Emu Deck and the Steam Deck that they actually exist. So what you're going to do in that instance is we're going to relaunch Emu Deck and get over to the Steam ROM Manager. Don't skip this step, it's not going to show up in your library otherwise. At the bottom right hand corner you're going to see a little tab that says tools and stuff and we're going to go ahead and open that and you're going to see all of these different options but the one we're dealing with today is Steam ROM Manager. This is how we're going to parse all the ROMs we put back onto the system, pull down art for all of them and make sure that they are in our library ready to run. Read that warning, it does change the controls on the Steam Deck if you are using physical controls on the deck itself, so once your mouse doesn't work you'll know why. All we need to do is come over here to Preview, and then from Preview we're going to generate an app list. Some things are going to show up that don't have anything to do with this video just based upon my current setup, but you'll see we're going to get a lot of different emulators that can pop into your library, but if we scroll down we're also going to see all of the different games we just added and art has been pulled for them. You can change the art if you want. The default art is usually very good with this scraper and once we decided that everything that we need is there is in fact there we'll go ahead and click save app list this is what's going to put all of these into your steam library so you can access them from the front end it's the easiest way to do it and i can't recommend it enough once we're done with that we can go ahead and close that rom map manager and then we can go ahead and close the tools and stuff window as well and we go right back to gaming mode. So now that we're back into the Steam Deck proper, the view that you're used to using, we're going to go ahead and go over to our library and we're going to find what was added from the ROM manager. You'll see Arcade and Arcade Mame Current. Sometimes they do duplicate. We have that emulation folder for all the different emulators in PlayStation and Super Nintendo that I added previously. But if we go into the main current folder, all five games are there. Granted, Zoo pulled down the wrong art, but I'm not surprised it's a very rare and obscure game. But if we select Violent Storm, we get into the game and we are playing. Now, there are other things that are essential to set up, in my opinion, for a good MAME experience on the Steam Deck, and we will get to those right after I let you listen to a little bit of the soundtrack for Violent Storm, because the Steam Deck does an awesome job with the audio on the dock, and honestly, it's some of the best music Konami ever made, so indulge me, and I'll finish up with the setup guide in just a moment, but enjoy! I just love that soundtrack, but right here is the most essential thing in my opinion you need to do to use MAME on the Steam Deck. We need to create shortcut keys for both the in MAME menu as well as the test button for different arcade boards. I am a very big arcade PCB collector, and let me tell you, some games use dip switches to change options, some games use a test menu. So the first thing I'm going to do is assign a hotkey, whatever button you're not using on the back I recommend, and I'm going to set that to tab, because tab is going to bring up the in main menu on any given game. So if we go back over to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and hit tab, we get all of the different options in MAME. Because on this game, all of the changes are articulated via physical dip switches on the arcade board or software dip switches in MAME. So you can go ahead and set whatever you want, but if you don't set that tab hotkey, there is no hotkey that I found on the Steam Deck that will allow you to get to this menu. 
Just make sure that if you are changing settings with the dip switches, you reset the system and that will force them to adhere. Nothing happens if you switch them in real time. You have to reset the board. But there is a secondary system involved and that is the test or service menu. If you use the tab hotkey and go into assignments for this game, whatever game you're running, you're going to see that there is a key called service mode and it's F2. This is basically consistent across all of MAME. So I want to set another hotkey to be F2 so I can pull up the arcade PCB menu. This is where you can test your buttons. This is where you can make all sorts of different difficulty and game changes, add violence in. So for R4, I just hotkey that over to F2. So now you'll see L4 and R4 are tab and F2. So if I go back into Violent Storm and I hit R4, I now have the PCB menu. So I can go into something like game options, change how many lives I get, say where there's gonna be an extra life, change the difficulty, and in Violent Storm, most importantly, change the violence. Definitely set your hotkey for tab and for F2, or else you're going to have to deal with whatever factory settings MAME gives you and that board had when it shipped. This is hyper important, so make sure you do it. I can't recommend it enough. No tab key, no F2 key, you're gonna have a really bad time. But there are a lot of other options that you can articulate for MAME, and I'm just gonna go over some of the most important in my example. But don't forget that you don't have to back out to the Steam Deck OS to change games. You can load up another ROM, just go to the folder that you have them installed into and select it. It's as simple as that. You can go back to the menu and load another game, that's totally fine. But in this option here as well, it does give you more than one MAME version. We can add more versions of MAME as well. So if you change the game in RetroArch, it's going to allow you to pick what version of MAME you want. But again, this is all running spectacularly. I'm only showing you games that I own original PCBs for, so I can kind of take a sense and look at how they're running. And Bubble Symphony, a game that I love, both PCB and on Sega Saturn, is exactly how it should be on the Steam Deck. Now do remember there's all sorts of different video options in the Steam Deck as well when you're under RetroArch. It should default to Vulkan. If it does not, make sure you are on Vulkan. I can't recommend it enough. Otherwise, you can leave pretty much everything as is. And if we go to the scaling options, you'll see integer scaling is off. If you want it on, go ahead and turn it on. You'll have some borders on your Steam Deck screen, but that's fine if that's how you like it. You can change the aspect ratio if you so want. I do not recommend doing this. You'll see how bad you can make it look. By default, it should be core provided, and I would leave it right there. But you'll see here, everything just looks great. This is exactly how Violent Storm should look, and it's amazing to have this in a handheld that you can take with you. Now remember, if you do want to add more cores to RetroArch, just go to the core downloader and go ahead and pick whatever you might want. You'll see that there are different options for different main builds, and there's so many other emulators you can use within RetroArch on your Steam Deck, but just remember that you can add them right from here, and if you want, leave me a comment down below and tell me what sort of Steam Deck video you want next as far as the emulation side is concerned, because I'm happy to make it if you guys keep watching. But do remember, you don't just need to launch it from the folder, we can use Emulation Station as well to stay different looking front end. These are kind of two different ways to achieve the same result. Some people really like Emulation Station because you get all this fun art in the front end. For me, it doesn't really matter so much, but just remember, if we go over to Arcade here, before you get into the game, if you hit the menu button, you're going to get different options that come up. And if we go to other settings down here, we're going to be able to change the alternate emulators, what we want this to default to. We could be on MAME Current or we could be on MAME Standalone. Those are two really good options, but you can change them in Emulation Station right under those options as well. And now let's take a look at that game zoo that had the CHD file along with it to make sure that is working. Now, granted, I tested it on RetroArch on my PC before I actually decided to bring it over to the Steam Deck, but if we go to where everything is, you execute the zip file, not the CHD file. I see people making this mistake as well and saying things don't load. If you have a game with a CHD folder, execute the zip file and you'll see here that now the Taito GNET is starting to load and we get right into the zoo. And honestly, if you've never played this game before, it is awesome. I have an original arcade PCB and cart for it and it is a ton of fun. And remember, if you want to add more games, just go ahead and follow this tutorial again and make sure you go to the Steam ROM Manager and do the preview again. It's as simple as that to load up games. But this is how you get MAME running on your Steam Deck. And like I said before, put that tab key and the F2 key bound to some buttons. That way you have full control over MAME. 
But honestly, even though you're looking at No Man's Sky, MAME on the Steam Deck is spectacular. Obviously MAME runs on pretty much everything, but this is one of my new favorite ways to play arcade emulation when I'm on the go. It's got all the controls I need, it's ultra configurable, and if you follow this guide, you too can be playing whatever MAME games run on MAME on your Steam Deck. Short sure of that, leave me a comment down below and tell me what Steam Deck video you want to watch next. But I appreciate you watching guys, hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.